Composite Godzilla. If you know anything about me, it's most likely that I despise Composite Godzilla. To the point where I have an entire YouTube short series about it. The thing I get asked a lot though, is why? Why do I hate Composite Godzilla? Well to be completely honest, it's because it's fan made. And don't get me wrong, I absolutely love some fan made Godzilla stories. Take Godzilla NES for example. And the next logical question would be, why do you hate some fan stories, yet like others at the same time? Well my friends, it comes down to two simple things. Consistency and proof. I know you may be confused by that, but let me explain. One popular argument in the Godzilla community is Legendary Godzilla vs Godzilla Ultima. My answer? Legendary Godzilla slams with almost zero difficulty. Now a popular argument to what I just said would be, well, Godzilla Ultima is a god. He's way more powerful. In fact, he's the strongest Godzilla ever. While yes, this is stated in the show, at the moment I have yet to see any godly abilities on screen. So while yes, it's true, I base my opinions on what I see on screen, to then be able to form an opinion that I believe to be factual. Apply this to fan-made stories. Godzilla NES checks off both boxes. Cosby Daff, the writer of this story, makes sure to have a consistent standard for his storytelling. His characters are strong, but not unbeatable. There are limits to what they can do. That of course checks off the consistency box. His visual aspect shows proof of the characters doing what they are stated to be doing, showing their limits on screen. Now enter Composite Godzilla. He checks off neither. In fact, I can't even find the original creator of this Godzilla. Because of that, he has been left to each viewer's interpretation. Each time I see a video about him, they say he wins without giving any proof. Even worse are the times that they do state his limits. They're worse because each fan gives him his own stats, whether it's light speed or being able to tear through time itself. He shows no consistency in any video. Now our second box, proof. I personally couldn't find where it originated from. And the only video I could find when I looked it up on YouTube were fan animations, but more importantly, the Godzilla Bonds of Blood. Yes, I watched the entire thing. I cry at sunset sometimes. We know, Sanda. Nowhere in this video did they call Godzilla Composite Godzilla. Fans just used that design and decided, yep, that's the one. Oh wait, never mind, because they can't even pick a design for it. I mean, look at all the different designs there are. Not only are they consistent, but Composite Godzilla is said to be every Godzilla in one. If that's the case, why are these designs just pictures of specific Godzillas? Look at that one, it is literally just Heisei Godzilla. Are you starting to see the issue? And finally, the biggest problem with this thing. It is single-handedly making the Godzilla community more hated. I've seen videos of people saying Goku or Superman vs Godzilla, and when they say Goku or Superman wins, the composite fans go nuts. They'll leave a comment like, you're just an idiot, composite Godzilla would beat them both. All this is doing is making the Godzilla community seem more toxic than it already is, because at the moment we don't have a good role model for the community to lean onto. So that leaves all the kids who think they're the savior of this community to argue with a middle-aged man in a comment section. So now that I have you all cut up, how can we fix this? Well, that's why I made this video today. I'll be taking one for the team, aka the entire Godzilla fanbase. And I'll be making a true, all-in-one composite Godzilla. Before we start, I ask you to watch this all the way through. I don't know how long this video will take, but for reference, I started writing this script on May 20th, 2023. Without further ado, let's make a true composite Godzilla. Just for some common knowledge, I'll be using every incarnation of Godzilla on film, video game, comics, and TV shows. Also, before we start, I want to thank my team of researchers. This video would have taken months alone. But thanks to them, it was much, much faster. Hey guys, Editing Godzilla Guy here. I do want to mention all these guys were compensated before anybody says like, oh, free labor. No, they were all paid. Um, and all their YouTubes will be down below, so make sure you go subscribe. Thank you guys once again for all the help. The very final thing, I know I did just say every single Godzilla, but so many of them are just copy and paste of other Godzillas. We're just going to use the ones with unique abilities and designs. So our lineup of Godzillas are... Everybody be ready, you're gonna hear Godzilla a lot. Showa Godzilla, Heisei Godzilla, Hanna-Barbera Godzilla, Millennium Godzilla, Kiryu Godzilla, Space Godzilla, Super Godzilla, Godzilla NES, Always Sunset on 3rd Street 2 Godzilla, Final Wars Godzilla, Legendary Godzilla, Shin Godzilla, Godzilla Earth, Godzilla Ultima, Gozibon Godzilla, Chibi Godzilla, Marvel Godzilla, Godzilla Rage Across Time, Godzilla in Hell, Godzilla Pipework, Godzilla Rulers of Earth, A Space Godzilla, Nike Godzilla, Tristar Godzilla, Zilla Jr., Godzilla Island, Godzilla Battle Line Soccer, and Godzilla Battle Line Baseball, GMK Godzilla, Godzilla Rex, Snow Godzilla, Monster Warrior Godzilla, Godzilla, King Godzilla, Godzilla 1954, Power Rangers Godzilla, 
Godzilla Possessed Child. Now, I have spent a long time making this video, so you better expect some dramatic and over-detailed stuff about to go down. Our Godzilla in this story is of course Composite Godzilla, but his true Goji name is Emperor Goji. With a juvenile height of 340 meters, he hits a peak height right at his death of 2017 meters. He dies at the ripe old age of 3.2 billion years old. He has a max weight of 1.7 million tons. Allies, none. Enemies, every other kaiju. Losses, one. Wins, 791. Confirm kills, 83 billion. Now, for real this time I swear, without further ado, let's get into his info. In this video, just like every other versus battle, we will be going over the basics. Those being strength, speed, IQ, durability, abilities, stamina, agility, and atomic breath. Starting, of course, with strength. Composite Godzilla is said to be the strongest Godzilla according to the fan edits. But just how strong is a realistic Composite Godzilla? I'm not going to tell you all the feats of Godzilla that we had to use to get this overall strength, but just know it was a lot. We're not going to do anything fancy, we're just going to simply add up everything into one single amount. Composite Godzilla's total lifting strength is 2,903,476 metric tons which converts to an eye-watering 6,401,068,872 pounds. Although, thanks to Space Godzilla and his ability to lift things with his mind, his strength could go well over 100 million tons. Besides his lifting strength, we also have a lot of shows of strength. These things include ripping off Mechagodzilla's head, causing the tectonic plates to break, was able to throw other monsters far into the sky, able to throw kaiju with just his mouth, killed every other kaiju, was able to destroy a meteor after charging his atomic breath for five years, conquered a planet, was able to match the strength of comic Thor, killed the pantheon with no difficulty, fought and won against Zeus's Hydra, won a 4v1 underwater, fought seven mechagodzillas and won, even though he was already tired from a previous fight, can dunk a basketball, can score a soccer ball, able to dig through the ground with ease, was able to fight against a cyber-enhanced version of himself, was able to bite so hard that he knocked out King Ghidorah, fought off a fleet of Gigans and Gigan Rex and still won, was able to fight Dinozords and Megazords, took out a fleet of space battleships and won with no damage, fought samurai versions of other kaiju, defeated Magida in one beam, took many attacks from Thor's hammer. Speed. Now this one drives me crazy when people say, oh, composite Godzilla can travel faster than light. Bullshit. No Godzilla can go faster than 400 miles an hour, much less light speed. But let's see what this composite Godzilla can do. Now how fast can he go? Adding up all the Godzilla's feats when it comes to speed, composite Godzilla's top running slash flying speed reaches a peak of 6,088 miles an hour or Mach 7.9. He's able to swim at 815 miles an hour, and is able to dig at 245 miles an hour. So it's safe to say he's faster than any other kaiju at the moment. Now a quick warning, some outlandish stuff is about to go down. This is one of our first made up abilities for this Godzilla. So this Godzilla can already lift any other kaiju, and he's able to move twice as fast as the fastest plane in the world. For reference, it would take this guy less than 10 hours to get around the entire planet. Now though, this guy gets his own category. Space travel speed. This Godzilla has a very unique ability. Using a Showa Godzilla's ability to travel in space, Space Godzilla's skill when it comes to space travel, and Shin Godzilla's self-mutation. Composite Godzilla can create crystal-like wings that stab out of his back. Funny enough, this is one of the few things that injure him. These wings that are a mixture of flesh and rock allow him to fly at unbelievable speeds. He moves so fast that once he flew past a planet, and his momentum pulled the planet with him. His biggest feat of this ability is when one time he moves so fast in space, he reversed the rotation of a black hole. Next, the mind. He may be strong, but just how smart is he? This is one of the categories that he kind of lacks in. Don't get me wrong, he is thousands of times smarter than a human, but not all-knowing. He knows how to perfectly use all of his abilities. He's able to quickly solve and counter enemies' attacks, and he is able to instantly know where any weak points of a kaiju are. Next is Composite Godzilla's abilities and agility. Starting, of course, with his abilities. Now one of Composite Godzilla's amazing abilities is being able to bear with me. Stupid. You saw that correctly, we have a sponsor for today's video. Shown on screen are some of the awesome products Rip City Kaiju is kind enough to send out. Let's take a look. Starting with this little Godzilla, this guy is a water squirter. If you saw my YouTube short on the Mecha Godzilla, this is pretty much just the regular Godzilla version. And speaking of the Mecha, oh, so thick. 
Next up is this 50th Memorial Weighted Godzilla Ball. I thought it was cool because all the little red dots are where monsters appear in the film. I just thought it was really cool. Next up is this, uh, questionable Godzilla. Not really. It's a little marble shooter. The idea is that you get little playing cards and shoot at it and try and knock them over. Now the main thing, this electronic mecha Godzilla. This thing is over 20 years old, older than me. It was made in 2003, and there's a multiple pack series, but this is the one they were kind enough to send out. Now I'm gonna be completely honest, I didn't even think this thing would work given it's 20 years old, but the light still works and it still moves. If you want to pick up your own little Godzilla knickknacks or even just big figures, make sure to check out the first link down below. That will be a direct link to Rip City Kaiju's eBay store where you can get all sorts of awesome little products. Thank you Rip City for sponsoring this video, greatly appreciate it. And back to it, Composite Godzilla. I've said this in other videos, but for real, buckle up this time, grab some popcorn because we have like two pages of Google Docs worth. Let's get into it. Speaking of abilities, what does this guy have in his arsenal? Atomic Breath, Magnetic Powers, Regeneration, Megaton Punch, Amphibianosis, Flight, Speech, Spiral Heat Ray, Nuclear Pulse, Energy Absorption and Projection, Burning Form, Fire Breath, Nose Flames, Laser Eyes, Fireballs, Photon Reactive Shield, Corona Beam, Gravity Tornado, Geokinesis, Energy Manipulation, Homing Ghost, Space Travel, Photon Hurricane, Aura, Telekinetic Shove, Nova Blast, Energy Tail, Explosive Shoulder Ram, Nova Breath, Super Punch, Kaiser Amp, Thermonuclear Pulse, Symbiosis, Heightened Senses, Telepathy, Tsunamis, Sharpened Dorsal Plates, Density Control, Thermal Vision, Alpha Call, Radiation Absorption, Radiation Heat Ray, Dorsal Plate Beam, Tail Beam, Self Mutation, Body Fluid, Anti Flash Membrane, Asymmetrical Permeable Shield, Super Oscillating Wave, Plasma Cutter, Metallic Tissue, Radiation Emission, Energy Conversion, Stealth, Atomic Tail Whip, Detection of Things on and Off Planet, Pressure Resistance, Flammable Ice Breath, Evolution, Archetype Production, Blood Tentacles, Terraforming, Radioactive Flame, Tail Whip, Demon Manipulation, Angel and Demon Atomic Breath Amp, Beam Reflection, Full Body Atomic Blast, Reproduction, Professional Basketballer, Professional Baseballer, Professional Soccer Baller, Asexual Reproduction, Burrowing, Eats Taco Bell, Eats Carl's Jr., Weakening Aura, Revival from Death, White Supercharged Atomic Abilities, Critical Mass, Glowing Particle, Space Travel, Two Brains, Gravity Beam, Sap Jet, God Killing Blast, Metal Resistance, Underwater Breathing, Incandescent Light, Armor, Skilled Sword User, Interdimensional Travel, Possession. Next, his agility. There isn't any good way to calculate this, but we will go over his best feats. Dodged many beams. Dodged rockets from fleets of mechas. Dodged EVA-01 spear. He can move with the flexibility of Final Wars Godzilla and Showa Godzilla, meaning he can dodge quite a bit. Next up are perhaps the two most important things on a battlefield, durability and stamina. I think he'll need either of these at this point. Stamina. There's not really much to calculate here. We'll just say he can fight for a few months on end without any breaks at all. Next up, Composite Godzilla's durability. He's already able to pick up millions of tons, but how much damage can he take? His shows of durability include taking millions of volts of electricity, able to withstand Kumanga's venom, survived being buried by Hedorah's sludge, survived in space, took his own atomic breath times a thousand thanks to the Super X, survived being in a volcano for five years, was able to swim in lava under the Earth's crust, also directly took his own atomic breath thanks to Space Godzilla's shield, was able to contain the blast of a nuclear satellite exploding in his hands without being damaged, was able to survive an artificial black hole, was able to survive the absolute zero cannon, his cells survived in a black hole, took many shots from Ogira's cannons, took many hits from Final Form Boggin, survived being frozen in ice for years, survived two massive extinction events, survived being dropped from the atmosphere by King Ghidorah and landing on his spikes without having any visible damage happen to them, took a hit from Mechagodzilla's Proton Scream, and only got surface burns on his skin. For reference, this same beam cut a skull crawler in half, survived the Castle Bravo nuke, took hits from Muto Prime, has an almost impenetrable shield, only being damaged by the non-physical Void Ghidorah. Got hit by 2,000 nukes and crushed Mount Everest and shrugged it off. Was able to take hits from Hulk and Thor. He survived all kind of attacks from Greek gods and their Hydra. Wasn't really phased by most of Orochi's attacks. Was able to withstand Destroya and Ghidorah's beams at the back of his head. Also seemed to have no damage done to him after he kept falling into the next level of hell. Was still alive while her organs were being taken out of her body took blasts from a cyber-enhanced version of himself, took hits from many different mutants, was able to take down a swarm of Gigans, tanked all the Dinosaur's attacks and seemed to not be phased, took all the Dragon Zord's attacks and wasn't even phased, 
Now I'll just throw out some random info. Destructive capability. This Godzilla can destroy planets within an hour. Resistance. This Godzilla, thanks to his many shields, can completely deflect, absorb, or even reverse beams. And of course, you can block things like rockets and bombs. Range. This Godzilla's atomic breath can go around 300 miles before it starts to disperse. Scale. Even though I hate the scaling system, I should give him one before people make one up for him. Given that he can destroy planets, survive heat much hotter than the core of the sun, and travel realities, I'll give his scale at a supercluster. If you don't know what a supercluster is, look it up, I'm not gonna explain it. Now, he could destroy much more than a supercluster. Just the fact that it takes so long to travel in between two superclusters, I think this Godzilla would get bored before he'd get to the other one. Experience. Though this Godzilla is very old, he has only been fighting for a few million years. And finally, we get to our story of Composite Godzilla. But before we do, here's how he killed a lot of other Composite Kaiju. Composite Manda. Manda summoned his ancient ocean. While Manda was in his immortal stage, Godzilla was fighting off all the other Mandas. Once Godzilla had killed all the other Mandas, he was attacked by Composite Manda. Though Godzilla quickly outsmarted him. While Manda was still in his immortal stage, Godzilla grabbed onto Manda, not letting go. Waiting for the ocean to vanish. Once it did, Godzilla ripped off Manda's head and threw his body to the ground. Composite Gigan. While the two Kaiju were fighting, Composite Gigan split. Godzilla fought them off, waiting for them to recombine. Once they started to recombine, he focused his mind to try and find where they would reappear. Within the time span of a single second, Godzilla figured out where they would reappear, and then summoned a massive crystal out of the ground, stabbing through Composite Gigan's body, before he could even move. Composite Mothra. Godzilla knew after fighting Legendary Godzilla that Ghidorah's beam could kill Mothra. During the fight where Godzilla fought against Composite Mothra and Ghidorah, he used this knowledge to his advantage, grabbing onto the weak Mothra and using her as a shield against Composite Ghidorah's beam, killing the weak Moth. Composite Ghidorah. After killing Mothra, Godzilla grabbed her stinger out of the ground and used it to stab through Ghidorah's chest, pinning him to the ground. Then Composite Godzilla charged up his atomic breath and disintegrated all three heads, leaving his body to decay. And that's everything to know about Composite Godzilla. Now it's time for the story. Once again, there will be some outlandish stuff about to go down. So grab some popcorn and get ready. For this is the story of Composite Godzilla. Trillions of years ago, something started to move in the Great Abyss. Things started to exist. After waiting hundreds of billions of years, many small particles popped in and out of existence until they collided. Element number nine, fluorine, the most reactive element. And more importantly, element 119, dimensium, the creation element. Somehow, floating through the infinite abyss, these two crossed paths and crashed. Even though it was only two elements, smaller than you can see, those two elements are what started it all, causing the hyperbang. Using the unstableness of fluorine and the infinite creation of dimensium, they created what we know as the multiverse. In less than a billionth of a second, thousands of universes had begun each with their own Big Bang. But what about the universe where the two elements are floating around in? Well, that is known as Reality Zero. In between all other possible universes lies Reality Zero, the pinpoint of everything. Just like any other universe, Reality Zero had its own Big Bang. It has its own planets, suns, galaxies, and life. Somewhere in its lifetime, Reality Zero started to create life. Scattered around Reality Zero's vast range of planets, multicellular life formed. One of which on a little planet we call Earth. Sound familiar? Somewhere in Earth's early development, on the hot magma-covered crust, something started to form. Some sort of scaled animal, resembling a lizard of sorts. Using the vast amount of radiation on the planet at the time, this little animal grew quickly. Within a few thousand years, it had transformed drastically, starting to stand on two legs, growing intricate designs on its back, and becoming self-aware. But sadly, that's where it ends for a long, long time. The creature sat alone on this planet for billions of years, left with itself, in the slowly evolving planet. Sure, there were things to do like hunt for food, but it wasn't fun for him, given his gigantic height. So he sat, waiting, and waiting, learning new abilities over the few thousand years, like a tail whip and some sort of fire breath. But other than that, there was nothing. The beast sat, watching the sun pass over the clouds. But then, he heard something. He heard booming sounds, getting faster and faster, until he saw it, in the sky. There appeared to be some sort of cracks in the sky. The cracks got larger, until they opened what looked to be a portal. And there was something else. Is that... No, it can't be, the beast thought to itself. But he was right. Out of the sky fell... himself. Crashing onto the ground so violently it sent shockwaves around the globe. 
The beast ran over to the fallen creature. He was looking at himself, but it was different. He was smaller and had different dorsal plates. The thing rose up, bloodied and dying. The beast tried to come for the dying monster, but it attacked him. The beast didn't know what to do, so he did the only thing he did know. Fight back, using an atomic blast. With one foul swoop, the beast killed the sky monster. However, something happened that the beast never saw coming. The body of the fallen monster started to move towards the beast. It attached itself to the beast's body, infusing itself. The beast cried in agony, but not from the thing attaching itself. Rather, the thing's mind. The beast was seeing memories that weren't his own, learning things he didn't know, shrieking as millions of years of information entered his mind uninvited. Godzilla. Is that what I am? thought the beast. And this creature I killed, he... from hell? That's right, from reality 29, Godzilla and hell had fallen level by level by level, falling all the way down here. Within the span of 300 years, two more Godzillas fell from the sky. It seemed after Godzilla and hell fell to the ground, he broke the stability of the multiverse, making Reality Zero into a hub, easily accessible to enter from different realities. The second Godzilla to fall was Monster Warrior Godzilla. After defeating the humans, the Wood Nymphs tried to transport Godzilla back to his reality. Sadly, she was killed while doing so, sending Monster Warrior down an undetermined portal, crashing into Reality Zero. Once again, tried to help out the new fallen Godzilla, but once again, he was attacked. Monster Warrior Godzilla, unlike Godzilla in Hell, wasn't injured or tired though. It was a much more difficult fight. Reality Zero Godzilla had a difficult time, but after long enough, he was able to use his sheer size to defeat him. Once again, the fallen Godzilla infused itself with Reality Zero Godzilla, causing immense pain once more. As more memories flushed into his mind, just like Godzilla in Hell, they were all negative. Seeing the hatred other Kaijuin humans held towards Godzilla, Reality Zero Godzilla became angry. However, after clearing his mind, he did sense something. Something that was abundant in his reality, but in a different way. Taking a close look at the armor of Monster Warrior Godzilla, he sensed it, Dimensium, but it was different from his own. He knew that if he could figure out how to use his own and the samples from Monster Warrior Godzilla's armor, he could soon travel realities at will. Then, 40 years later, just what he needed happened. Another crack in the sky. Coming in from Reality 59, Phase 17, Shin Godzilla. What is that thing Reality Zero Godzilla thought to himself? Shin Godzilla flew through the air with his giant wings and landed right in front of Reality Zero Godzilla. Though Reality Zero Godzilla was tall, this thing was far beyond him. Having self-mutated so much, Shin Godzilla stood well over 600 meters tall. Reality Zero Godzilla knew that this was his ticket out of here. Reality Zero Godzilla ran, with Shin Godzilla flying right behind him. Before Shin could bite into him, Reality Zero Godzilla grabbed the sword from the fallen grave of Monster Warrior Godzilla and turned around. He then ran and slid right under Shin Godzilla. Using the momentum they both had, Reality Zero Godzilla held his sword up, sliding under Shin Godzilla, cutting his whole body in half. The Shin Godzilla tried to self-mutate into two smaller beasts, but Reality Zero Godzilla quickly disintegrated them both with his atomic breath. For the final time, all the memories and abilities of the Godzilla he just killed rushed into him. With four Godzillas in one now, he became Composite Godzilla. With the new ability to self-mutate, he's now able to use Dimensium to travel realities. And he does exactly that. Composite Godzilla, filled with rage from the other Godzilla's memories, goes from reality to reality, killing every Godzilla he can find. Reality 45, Godzilla 1954. Reality 72, Legendary Godzilla. Reality 81, Nike Godzilla. And much, much more. After a rampage that lasted three years, from reality to reality, he had done it. He had killed every other Godzilla in the multiverse. Full of pride, he sat back down, the very place where the first Godzilla fell, and waited. Can't wait to kill more, he thought. Can't wait for somebody to challenge me. But it never happened. He had done it. He had killed every other Godzilla to ever exist. So now what he thought to himself, there's nothing to do, he screamed. But then he had an idea. Quickly growing his wings and opening another tear in the sky, he went from reality to reality, grabbing every other kaiju and bringing them to his world. Within a few hours, he had gathered over 500 kaiju and put them on his planet. This should keep me entertained for a while, he thought to himself. Little did he know that doing this would lead to his death. Composite Godzilla watched his planet closely, watching kaijus brawl for his enjoyment. He thought he was a god. The other kaiju saw him as a demon. Over millions of years, kaiju died or flew into the cosmos, but some stayed and worked together. The ones that worked together formed into their own composite kaiju, including Anguirus, Mothra, Rodan, Mechagodzilla, Manda, and more. Each composite kaiju became allies, as they knew they didn't stand a chance against Godzilla alone. Once every normal kaiju had died, Composite Godzilla started to fight off and kill the Composite Kaiju, showing just how strong he is by killing Composite Ghidorah and Mothra at the same time. After killing many of the Composite Kaiju over a span of a few thousand years, only four remained, these being Mechagodzilla, Rodan, Baragon, and Anguirus. 
The four became like a family, helping each other to survive and hide from Composite Godzilla. However, one day changed all of that. The four were out wandering the massive earth when they heard a sonic boom turning around and they saw him, Composite Godzilla, looking at them with steam coming from his nose and a snarled grin on his face. He looked right at the four. The four kaiju filled with fear knew they couldn't outrun him, so they did what they could, intimidation. The four stared back at the beast that was now well over a thousand meters tall. Without warning, he charged at them. In less than 10 seconds, he was face to face with them. Mechagodzilla screamed, I'll fight them, you guys run. Mechagodzilla told the three to leave. Rodan and Baragon quickly ran, but Anguirus stayed by his side. What are you doing? Get lost, Mechagodzilla screamed at Anguirus. I'm never leaving our friend, he yelled back. Composite Godzilla lunged at Anguirus, but Mechagodzilla used his nanotech to grab onto his fist and leg to stop him for a moment. Without missing a beat, Composite Godzilla pulsed, frying away some of the nanobots. He then grabbed Anguirus. Mechagodzilla tried to save his friend and shoots a proton screen, but it just flies off Godzilla, thanks to his many shields. With horror in his eyes, Mechagodzilla watched Godzilla rip the spikes out of Anguirus' back. Godzilla knowing he can't kill Anguirus if he still has those spikes in his back. Mechagodzilla charged at Godzilla, but once again, he just slapped him far away. Godzilla then stands over the bleeding Anguirus, and with no mercy or hesitation, blasts Anguirus, frying his body to ash. Godzilla then turns to the petrified Mechagodzilla. You! You killed my friend, he wails. Godzilla simply chuckles and walks over. Mechagodzilla doesn't even try to fight or even stand, knowing it's pointless. But right before Godzilla could kill him, Rodan, flying at half the speed of light, claps his wings so hard, the shock sends Godzilla tumbling across the desert. Rodan yells at Mechagodzilla to get on. Mechagodzilla, with a saddened look, attaches himself to Rodan's body. Rodan then flies off before Godzilla could even get up. I'll kill you all, you know. Composite Godzilla screamed. Rodan, Paragon, and Mechagodzilla were all that's left. Mechagodzilla, full of rage, started to think of ways to kill Composite Godzilla once and for all. Using his hundreds of processors, he went through thousands of different ways to beat him. And after days of thinking of a plan, he got it. Godzilla walked around his almost lifeless planet. After millions of years, he finally started to come to terms with what he has done. He feels guilty. But it's too late for him now. He's gotten this far. He'll finish his job. It's either him or those last three kaiju. Right as he starts to think about this, he starts to hear booming, getting faster and faster. Another portal, he thought? He looked around, but didn't see any cracks. However, he did see something. It's going way too fast for even him to be able to see. His gaze is taken away from the thing as he starts to feel something around his feet. Looking down, he sees it. Red mist. What the? What is this, he thought. He couldn't move. It then clicks. That thing in the sky was Rodan. Looking up, he sees Rodan, and he sees that he's still making more and more mist. After a few minutes, it's up to his head. He still can't move at all, as if he was frozen in place. He tries to use his atomic breath, but the cold of the mist cools his body down, making him not able to use any atomic weaponry. He starts to feel something again, rumbling under his feet. The ground suddenly opened. It was Baragon. He used his tunnel rays to dig out around Godzilla while he was stuck. Godzilla falls through the mist into the hole. Are they stupid, he thought? Godzilla starts to grow his wings to fly away, but before they could fully form, Baragon jumps at him from the inner wall of the hole. Using a super slice, he then cuts through Godzilla's shield, permanently destroying it. Before Godzilla could grab him, he dug back into the ground. That won't stop me, he yelled, quickly continuing to grow his wings. But once more, Baragon comes out of the wall, cutting off his wings. Godzilla wails in pain, not being able to grow them back. He quickly calms down to think, he then figures out, using his long fingers, he digs his claws into the side of the hole, slowing his fall. But before he could fully stop, he heard the boom again, without even being able to look up. Rodan flies at Godzilla at the speed of light. In one quick move, Rodan claps his wings with everything he's got. The clap was so hard that it even breaks Rodan's wings. But he did it. The force from the wing clap was so violent that it not only knocked Godzilla off the wall, but it was so fast that it ripped Godzilla's fingers off. Most importantly, Mechagodzilla is now on Godzilla's body. From the start, before Rodan even started to make the mist, Mechagodzilla encased Rodan. Not just for protection, but for the final part of the plan. When Rodan clapped his wings, it sent Mechagodzilla right at Godzilla. Now on him, Mechagodzilla covered Godzilla's entire body in nanotech. Godzilla screams in frustration, though that was a horrible idea. For now, Mechagodzilla can execute the final part of his plan. Mechagodzilla floods nanotech into Godzilla's mouth getting into his entire body. And since Godzilla now has no fingers, he can't grab at the nanotech. Godzilla tries to pulse, but Mechagodzilla keeps his entire body cool using the absolute zero cannon. Godzilla and Mechagodzilla fall further and further into the earth. You'll kill us both, you know! 
Mechagodzilla yells at Mechagodzilla. That's the plan, Mechagodzilla says back. Using his nanotech, Mechagodzilla forms his chest beam inside of Godzilla's stomach. All of the Godzillas inside of Composite Godzilla try to fight, but they're all held back. Out of all the beasts that make up Composite Godzilla, one was in control. Only one single monster was in control at this very moment. Reality Zero Godzilla. Mechagodzilla activates his chest beam, shooting right through Godzilla, killing him. Both Mechagodzilla and Godzilla fall into the liquid iron. Finally, Composite Godzilla is no more. Baragon and Rodan are all that's left. The earth starts to crumble around them. Before they could both be killed, two portals open. They look at each other with sadness in their eyes and leave back to their original realities. Composite Godzilla is no more. The fan-made Composite Godzilla is nothing more than a kaiju, not good nor evil. However, mine is very different. It's a story about a simple animal that was content with his home, a simple and peaceful creature. It's a story about suffering and not being able to fight against one's own mind. It's a story about hatred and death. Now, I know that sounds gloomy and sad, but just give me a moment. It's also a story about new hopes and overcoming all those who oppose one's path, being able to push through and shine brighter than all of those who oppose you. If I'm gonna leave you with one message, it's to just keep going. There's always light at the end of the tunnel. If you don't see it, well, you're not at the end yet. Um, going off script, I mean, it says like, uh, I'll read what the script says. I hope you enjoyed the video, blah, 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 blah. But I do want to thank my insane team, 18 people including me. Um, thank you to all my artists for uh, putting up with my absurd art requests. You guys really, really grind it out hard. Thank you to my researchers who put probably around 200 hours with me into just being on the phone call and researching every Godzilla and all the info we could find. I swear to God, if I get one comment, Ah, oh, well, you, well, well, he's stronger because Final Wars is a universal- Shut up. Thank you to my fellow YouTubers who are helping promote this video. Thank you to Rip City Kaiju for, you know, <laughs> of course, sponsoring this video. Shout out to my parents' closet for having really good sound quality. And yeah, I, uh, this, this is really big. I'm recording this right now. Um, this, of course, will be out. If you're seeing this at G-Fest, hi. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and this is really big for me because we spent a whole bunch of time I want to get this up because, as you guys know, I hate Composite Godzilla. Um, and this means a lot to me, having an actual Composite Godzilla. One that I think is fitting and does justice to every Godzilla out there. Until next time, everybody, keep collecting. Godzilla Guy out. See ya.